the fact she was the first matters. Uh, it matters that someone blazes the trail because it inspires others to follow. And then her legacy is about being the first, but so much more than that. When we look at what she achieved as Premier of this state, it truly is a remarkable track record for a short period of service as Premier. And particularly, I think, Victorian schools remember the Joan Kerner reforms. And yet, for that time in active politics, in many ways she will be equally remembered for what she achieved in the days after politics, the creation of Emily's List, the promotion of the affirmative action target and everything she did for women. I think Joan's uh, tenacity, her courage, her conviction and her absolute effectiveness. When she put her mind to something, she delivered uh, and she delivered so very well. Uh, in, in everything she did, in every policy area, in politics, before politics and of course afterwards, she was always fighting, always campaigning and, and, and always motivated by you know, those things that define our party. Progress and empowerment and a better and stronger uh, Victoria and the acknowledgement that you can't be a stronger state unless you're a fairer state and equality is at the heart of fairness. Didn't believe in the glimmer and the pizzazz of politics and the type A personality that we see so often in politics, but was really focused on making every woman believe in her own potential and her own leadership capabilities. So I think humility as well as brilliance is probably some of her wonderful qualities and um, a terrific and cracking sense of humour. I remember going around the table one day at an Emily's List meeting and people were asked to talk about what their connection was or how they got involved in Emily's List and two thirds of the women around the room said that you know Joan was their inspiration in being involved or Joan had talked them into being involved and Joan was very much uh, the type of person who talked you into things. She would take on board your concerns and if she could do anything about fixing a problem or helping you out or saying the right words, the you know the kindest words sometimes, she would go for it. And uh, a couple of times she got things fixed for me and I always are grateful for that because that was the start of me realising that somebody had confidence in me in my political career but also that uh, she was going to be there to support me along the way and she showed me how to do it. Um, she was incredibly generous with her time and, um, and believed that good leadership was best when it was um, dispersed amongst people and that um, you grew and evolved um, together and so she always had like a, a collective vision of, um, about what it meant to be a leader. Um, Joan was a great mentor to me for many years as she was to probably hundreds and thousands of Australian women and women internationally. And those, the testament to Joan from that is that those women, most of those women go on to mentor other women. And so we've got a huge ripple effect that's coming from what Joan did in her mentoring of women. Despite the, her being noted and remembered best for two particular aspects of policy, namely education and gender issues, uh, overarching all of that was a commitment to what I'll call deeper labour values of what's in the best interest of the great mass of the people. Oh, her advocacy and her championing the need to pre-select more women in the Labor Party, pre-select women not just in marginal seats or liberal held seats but in safe Labor seats as well, um, that has um, had an enormous change um, in the Labor Party ranks. If Joan were here today, she would be extremely proud of the work that Daniel Andrews' Labor government is doing, particularly with our Royal Commission into Family Violence, and I think she would be leading the charge out there in, in the community, ensuring that uh, we work towards building a state where women are safe, women and children are safe in their homes. I think she would also be extraordinarily proud of all the Labor women here in the House today. Ah, WWJKD, what would Joan Kerner do? Oh, look, it's a question that's um, helped me navigate this past year um, in her absence. And I think um, if she was here, she'd be going up to the young women and checking in on how they're doing um, and speaking words of wisdom to inspire them and keep their spirits alive in terms of working towards social justice aims and the labour movement. Um, and she'd be doing the same with the older women in the room in terms of, you know, seeing them not just as politicians, um, but as people with families who are juggling 
and, and it got real lives like the rest of us and juggling work and family and the like and really checking with how they're doing, not just in their portfolios, but how are they doing juggling being a mum or being a sister or being a partner in that regard. She'd be here telling us all about how we had to do more and we had to do better and we had to be quick about it. Uh, look, she'd be working for the Victorian community like she did you know, every day of her adult life. She'd be speaking to various people in this government about what ought need to be done. She was, of course, head of so many organisations, non-government organisations, and patron of so many, that um, she would be mentoring Emily's List candidates, she'd be talking with people, and she'd be so glad that we've got such a wonderful state government under Daniel Andrews. She would be tickle pink about um, how good he is about women's issues and things like that. She was um, fierce and fun uh, in the way that she constantly said making a decision to not get involved in politics is political in itself and we need to get more women at the table. Um, I know in Melbourne's western suburbs where Joan is revered um, and deeply missed um, that she had an incredible reputation about standing up for ordinary people but also making sure that ordinary people knew how to exercise their power to influence decisions of government that impacted upon them. As we think about politics in our 21st century, that equality and particularly gender equality um, is just one of those things that no one will settle for anything less than that and I think Joan, Joan Kerner more than many, many other leaders has played a defining role in that. In my memory, she was both a visionary, but someone who would always inspire you to take the next step and the next step and the next step. And sometimes, when you wouldn't feel like you were making much progress, she was the one that would remind you of the long-term purpose and ask you to look back and see, actually, you'd come a long way, and then look forward and keep going.